So it's been about six months since I've purchased the R6. I've been using it and I'm pretty confident up to this point that I have my menu settings all locked in and my buttons customized. Are they any different than anybody else out there? We'll stick around and find out. Hey friends, Peter Fasciano here, welcome to my channel. Today's video is all about customization and menu settings. Prior to showing you guys all this, just to let you know, I have updated the camera to version 1.4, which enables me to shoot Canon C-Log3. If you haven't done that, go ahead and update your camera, and I have a link in the description on how to do that. This video is gonna be broken up into individual menus. I'm gonna start with the manual mode, then I'm gonna to move to video. In between each of the menus, I'm gonna pause and kind of give you a recap of what I've done. I'm only gonna be talking about the options in the menus that I've changed. Everything else is just gonna be skipped over. And then I'm gonna show you how I ended up changing my buttons to customize how I use them. So with all that, let's go ahead and jump into today's video. Starting out with the red camera icon, menu number one, image quality is raw. I don't really do JPEG. The only time I'm messing around with JPEG is when I'm transferring the files from my camera to my phone via the Canon Connect app. Otherwise, my camera lives in RAW. My cropping aspect ratio is on full. Every once in a while, I will change to the 1.6 crop if I need that extra reach, but otherwise, I'm on full. Menu number two, I don't touch any of these. Menu three, I've done a couple of things. First of all, white balance. When I'm outside and I don't have my white card or my gray card, I typically shoot in 5200 Kelvin. Otherwise, I will go down to my custom white balance and set my white balance. My color space is all Adobe RGB since I'm on Premiere Pro and Lightroom and my monitor is set to Adobe RGB colors. I'm just in the RGB color space. My picture style is set to neutral. And again, this doesn't really have anything to do with shooting raw. It has everything to do with viewing the images on the back of the camera or transferring from the camera to my phone via the Canon Connect app and I just have that picture style set to neutral. You can go in and select whichever one suits you best. I just on neutral. Menu number four, I don't do anything there. Menu number five, nothing there. Menu six, I shoot my shutter mode to electronic. I don't mess around with the mechanical shutter any longer. I know some people don't like having the silent electronic shutter and they lose track of how many pictures they take. But I'm trying to get away from having my camera make any sound whatsoever so it lives on electronic. And I like the 20 shots per second when the appropriate lens is attached to it. Nothing more on this menu. Image stabilization mode I have turned on, internal stabilization mode and the digital internal stabilization. And my still photos are on always. My touch shutter is shut off because I'm constantly on the LCD screen in the back and I don't want my pictures being taken um, other than the shutter button. Moving down to shooting information display. This is all customized based on what you guys like. My settings, my screen information, I want the majority of all the information showing on my LCD screen. So I have it set to number three. Every once in a while, I will change it by clicking the information edit scene and take away maybe the balance or the histogram. But otherwise, all the information is on there. My viewfinder, when I'm looking through the viewfinder, I have that set to everything as well. My viewfinder vertical display is turned on. My grid display is set to three by three, but every once in a while I will go six by four and the three by three diagonals. It just depends on what I'm doing at the time. My histogram display, I have set to brightness. I, I don't look at my RGB. I keep that on brightness. And then my display size is set to small. If you put the display to large, the histogram shows up pretty large in the scene. So I just keep the display size to small. Moving on to eight, my viewfinder display format is set to display number one. I don't like display number two because it shrinks down the image in the viewfinder. I want display one so the entire viewfinder is filled with the image. My display performance is set to smooth because I'm working with wildlife that's moving fast. So I want the most frames per second in my viewfinder. So I keep that at smooth, which brings us to the last menu for the camera icon. When you're in manual mode, you have the ability to automatically shoot video. So make sure that you set up your movie record quality to what suits you best. I'm shoot at 4K, 30 frames per second. My sound recording is set to manual. As you can tell, I am looking like my audio levels are pretty good at the moment. So if you look at my recording level, I believe I am 11 clicks left of center. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. 11 clicks left of center. So the preamp outs on this, based on the microphones that I use, that's where I'm at. I don't do anything with the other menu items. So the main takeaway here on the manual menu settings for that red camera icon uh, are two things. First of all is the white balance. 
white balance is a tricky thing. Uh, if you're just starting out, you might want to just stick with auto white balance, but once you get into color correction, color grading, you might want to start to incorporate a custom white balance. The next one is the record quality. Now, as you can tell here, this is kind of my janky uh, setup for recording the screen. I have an Atomos Ninja 5 on order, so hopefully I'll be able to um, get a little bit better quality when, when uh, recording my actual screens and what I do. When setting up your movie record quality in this menu, unlike the R5, where you actually have to go in and change your uh, menu from photo to video before you start shooting video, I know there's a workaround where you can remap a button on the front of the camera to automatically start shooting video, but the R6 allows you the ability from photo mode just to push the record button and you're able to record video. So that's kind of a nice feature to have. So make sure you're setting that to what you want. Other than that, the red camera icon is pretty easy in uh, manual mode. So let's move on to the autofocus modes where I have done most of my changes, especially with my customization of the buttons. The pink autofocus menu is where most of my changes happen. So we're taking a look at the autofocus operation. I have it set to servo. My autofocus method is set to the single point or the one point autofocus. And that might sound a little bit counterintuitive, but I'll show you why I do that in a second. My subject to detect is set to animals. And anytime I shoot a video in the studio, I just make sure I set it over back to people. My eye detection is shut off at the current moment because of the autofocus method. My continuous autofocus I disable, otherwise the camera constantly hunts for something to focus on and it'll just drain the battery completely. Movie servo autofocus is enabled. Touch and drag autofocus settings I have enabled, set to the right hand side, and the position method is relative. Moving on to menu number two, manual focus peaking settings. This is I kind of go back and forth on. Sometimes I'll have it on if I don't have my zebras set. And when my zebras are set, this is shut to off. Right now I have my zebras going, so it's off. When they are on, I have my levels on high and the color set to red. My focus guide is on. This just means you have those three little triangles that when you're doing manual focus, the three triangles match up, turn green, and you know that you're in focus. It's just another method to help you focus when you're in manual focus. My auto assist beam firing is off. I don't want my camera not only to not make noise, but I don't want annoying lights being thrown out into the world. So I just have the assistant beam firing off. Moving on to number three, since I'm taking pictures of birds and they're fast moving, I have my case set to number four and I really don't mess around with the track sensitivity or the accelerate decelerate tracking. I just have it as a default, but I do set the camera to case number four. And this is gonna vary depending upon your shooting style. I just found that case four, shooting birds in flight, this helps me a lot. The autofocus menu number four. The only thing I changed down here is I limit the autofocus methods to the first three the tracking, the spot autofocus, and this one you can't shut off, the one in the middle, just that single point autofocus. I have all of the other autofocus points turned off because I hardly ever use them. And when I use the depth of field button, when I remap the depth of field button on the front, I just wanna cycle through these three as fast as I possibly can. And I'll show you that in a second. But if you want all of them on, you can just simply select all of them and when you push the remapped depth of field button on the front of the camera, you can cycle through all of these instead of using the autofocus method button here and have to go through that extra step of pushing the button and then turning a knob. This way, it will automatically cycle through your autofocus points that you have set just simply by pushing the depth of field button on the front of the camera. And like I said, I'll show you that in a second. Everything else is default. Autofocus menu number five, the only thing I change here is the initial servo autofocus point for face tracking. I have that set to the single point autofocus in the very center. Once I lock onto a subject, then it will pick it up and it'll start tracking it. And if it has an eye, it'll pick up the eye. Everything else on this menu, I just stay as default. So that was my setup for the autofocus points. Now you also need to remember that I'm looking at this camera as far as video and photos go as a wildlife photographer a hobbyist at best, not a professional in any way. So over the course of the six months that I've been using it, these settings seem to be working best for me. And the reason why I like to remap the depth of field button to the different autofocus points is that's where my finger naturally lies. And then my thumb is set to two of the back buttons to do back button focus. So if I don't have the correct 
autofocus point, I can just quickly shift through all of the ones that I have selected. If I feel like I need more, I'll just go ahead and add those autofocus points back to the menu so I can cycle through more of them. This way it gives me the option of a single point autofocus, the one point autofocus, the face detect, and then I can cycle through any of the other choices that I need to if I end up needing those individual autofocus points. It's a lot of autofocus. And then the only other thing that I need to say about the autofocus itself is it sounds like it's a little bit counterintuitive to start out with the single point autofocus without having eye detect for the animals. And what I've noticed with the R6 and the R5, when you have it on animal eye detect and that's your main focus point, if you have multiple animals in the scene and you do your, your autofocus, it may jump to a branch, it may jump to the wrong animal, and it might focus on one in the back or one in the front when you, when you don't really want it that way. So having the single point autofocus works really well because you can focus in on one individual animal and then it'll lock onto the eye. All right, how about that for a jump cut? I don't know if you guys heard uh, the door open up in the background, but the Ninja 5 just showed up along with my SSD and my cable. So that's gonna be for a, uh, a separate video. So now let's go ahead and move on to the rest of the manual settings and then jump into video and then we'll finish this up. Looking at the blue play menu, I don't have anything set here with the exception of my magnification on menu number four. I have it set at eight times. So anytime I preview an image on the back, it automatically zooms into eight times magnification just to check focus, but other than that, really don't have anything else with the exception of my highlight alert is enabled. Again, when I review pictures on the back of the screen, if any of my highlights are blown out, I'll have like a flashing part of my image so I know that that part of it is overexposed. Other than that, the entire play menu is left alone. The purple icon deals with Wi-Fi. So just set up your Wi-Fi if you're gonna end up transferring pictures or video uh, via the Canon Connect app or through uh, Wi-Fi directly to your computer. Moving on to the wrench icon, menu number one, my record function and card folder select. This, is, this has something to do with the firmware upgrade 1.4.0. So if we take a look at the record options, you can see that I'm able to record video uh, and photos to multiple cards now. With the other firmware or without the firmware update you were only able to back up video or shoot video to one card but now with the new firmware you can record to multiple cards so my record option for photo is to multiple cards and my record option for video is to multiple cards i play back my photos on card number one and then play back video from card number two there's no rhyme or reason to this i just have it set up as one and two my file numbering is continuous. Um, I think everything else is all set here. Menu number two, I'm in the United States, so my language is English. I'm also at NTSC, if you guys are outside the United States. Overseas, I believe you set it to PAL. My help text is small. I have glasses, so I just set it to small. I don't want my camera to make any noises, so I have my beep disabled. My power saving, I have four batteries, and since I'm out doing wildlife, I don't want my camera to shut off, so I have everything set at maximum. My display off is at 30 minutes. Auto power off is disabled, and viewfinder is disabled. My eco mode or echo mode, eco mode is turned to off. Menu number three, I think I have my screen viewfinder display. I don't think this is default, so I have this set to auto two. Screen brightness to five, everything else is default. Menu number four, everything here is default as well. Everything here is set to default. And as you can see, it says right here that I have it upgraded to firmware, to the most current firmware at the time of shooting this video to 1.4.0. Orange camera icon number one, this menu, everything is default. Menu number two, looks like everything is default. Number three, the only thing that I change here is customization on the buttons and customized dials. My customization on buttons, I'll go ahead and show you this really quick. My front shutter button, I have disabled the focus. So the autofocus has been disabled and I only want metering for my shutter button in the front because as I mentioned before, I have dual back button focus. 
So I want to get rid of the focusing from the shutter button and just do metering. Going down to my autofocus on or the AF on button. The AF on button is going to help me with my back button focus. And this, I believe, comes default on the camera already. But if I scroll down one more to the star button, I've set the star button to I autofocus. So when I sh shift over to my second back button, this is what's going to capture the eye. And it just gives me options. So if I'm not getting exactly what I need in focus, I'll move my thumb over and just hit the eye autofocus. Once I have an object locked on, I can use that. If not, then I can just go ahead and scroll through the depth of field button on the front, which leads me to this custom. So the depth of field button, as you can see here, I have this set to direct autofocus method selection. So let me show you this really quick. I have the single point autofocus in the middle and I push the depth of field button that's been remapped, changes it to the one point autofocus and then I end up having the tracking eye detect. So I can just scroll through each one of these if I'm not getting the results that I need. It's just very handy. My customized dials, the only thing I've changed here, I'm used to the M6 Mark II and the M50, so I just changed it to what I was used to. So the dial on the top is my shutter speed, the dial on the back is my aperture, and then ISO is the wheel. I don't really use much of exposure compensation, but when I do, I just have that mapped to the front ring on the EF lenses. Menu number four, I believe auto compression is turned off. Everything else is default. And then number five, nothing there. And then the star menu is basically just you customizing the most used buttons if you want to just set it up so you don't have to dive into the menus. So that's gonna take care of all the manual settings that I just gotta tell you, the Animos is awesome. I, I absolutely love this. So let's go ahead and move over to the video and let's just fly through the video because there's a couple of things that are just gonna transfer over from the manual to the video, but there are a few things that I do change in the video options. Make sure your mode dial on the top of the camera is set to video. And this is not gonna take long, like I said, because a lot of the stuff carries over from the manual mode. My shooting mode is in manual. I don't want my camera to make auto exposure for me, so I'm in manual. My preferred movie record quality is 30 frames per second at 4K, but you can go ahead and change this to anything that you want. I prefer 30 frames per second, 4K. High frame rate is disabled. If you want to shoot 120 frames per second, you can enable this, but movie cropping disabled, sound recording carries over from the previous one. Menu number two, nothing on here is changed, but I do have a question. Uh, ISO speed settings. Since I'm working with C-Log and C-Log 3, I'm not exactly positive. I'm not familiar with all of the nuances with shooting log. I've heard that you have a minimum ISO of either 400 or 800, depending upon C-Log or C-Log 3. I'm not exactly positive on that, but if anybody knows, put some comments down below if there is a minimum ISO that you should be working with. If you shouldn't go below 200, if you shouldn't be shooting at 100 ISO, I, I just heard that. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where I did, but if you guys do know, leave some comments down below. Everything else on this menu is default. White balance, I'm set at 5200 because I was outside shooting a Tragopon V6 hide video and I, I had this outside so I was set to 5200. And if you notice the picture style and clarity are blacked out so I can't change that because I'm currently shooting Canon Log and I'm in Canon Log 3. My view assist is shut off. And the reason why I have shut my view assist off is because I wanna to start to learn how to read log footage without having, having any assistance on what the footage will look like. So I wanna know what it looks like if it's overexposed, underexposed, and just train my eye in doing that. So that's why I have the view assist off. Color matrix is blocked out because I can't adjust it. And then the color space is BT709. I'm not really too sure what the BT2020 is. I don't know if that's higher quality or if computers can't handle it. So everything seems to be Rec 709 or BT709. So I just keep it at that. Menu number four, default five, blacked out six, default seven, default with the exception of zebras. This is what I was talking about. So on manual mode, you don't have the option for zebras. It's only in video mode. And when zebras are set on video mode, then your focus peaking is unavailable. So if you want focus peaking, you have to shut the zebras off. Now, since I'm using 
a gray card and a white card and the color checker cards, I have my zebra settings on and my zebra level one is set to 40%. So that's gonna help me with my exposure when I use my gray card. Other than that, my zebras stay on unless I want to use manual focus peaking. The shooting information display and vertical display is carried over from the manual. And right now the HDMI display is set to camera plus monitor because I'm shooting or recording with my Atomos Ninja which I don't know if I've told you or not. I love this thing, this is fantastic. I should have gotten this much, much sooner. And I believe everything else is carried over from the manual mode. Now my autofocus method right now, you can see that this is autofocus with eye detect set on people. The reason I it's set this way is because I was doing studio work and I was also shooting outside with the Tragopon video. So I had this set to eye detect me because I wasn't taking pictures at the time of birds or wildlife. So it's always important. If you're shooting animals, put it on an animal. If you're shooting people, go back in and make sure you change it back to people. Eye detect is enabled, touch and drag autofocus. So everything else and see this, so you can see manual focus peaking is blacked out because zebras are set to on. Finish this up. Autofocus menu number three, everything is carried over from the manual. Everything on four. Yeah, I think the magnification, the highlight alert, all of the other functions seem to be carried over from the manual settings. And other than that, I believe that takes care of the video settings. Now, I always feel like I need to have disclaimers here. These are my settings. There's really no right or wrong way to do the settings. It's up to you based on your workflow and what you end up doing with the cameras. This is just how I have it set up. It works best for me for my video shooting in the studio or outside, as well as my wildlife photography for the, for the uh, settings itself. You can tweak and adjust and do everything that you need to do to suit your purposes. So I think with all that being said, like, share, subscribe. If you're not a subscriber uh, and you dig this material, consider clicking on that subscribe down, button down below. Comment on how you guys have your camera set up. Did you guys learn anything? Is any is everything the exact same as every other person? Let me know in the comments below. And then with all that, I guess I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.